good evening students welcome to the class so today in this class we are going to discuss some of the topics which are completely related to biology here and under this we are going to discuss about some of the very important questions which are related to the discoveries as well as inventions of different concepts okay different instruments let us know about this here and under this the first question that we have here is the first heart transplantation was performed by option a dr william harvey sir f g hopkins dr louis pasteur dr c bernard okay now let us look at the answer the right answer here is option d okay dr c bernard so he was the one for the first time who made the successful animal to animal heart transplantation that is specifically here between human being to human being so from one human to the another human being the heart has been transplantation transplanted by dr c bernard for the first time on 3rd december 1967 okay here christian neithling bernard is this is what is full name christian neithling bernard he was a south african cardiac surgeon who performed the world's first successful heart transplantation okay that is on 3 december 1967 so before this so for the first time he was successfully transplanted kidney also that is in the year 1953 in united states okay in 1953 transplanted kidney from human to human similarly on, on 3 december 1967 he transplanted human heart okay and it was completely successful so when we are looking at the rest of the year dr william harvey so he was the one for the first time he studied about the blood circulatory system in human beings and when we are looking at sir f g hopkins okay frederick goland hopkins he was the one who identified invented different vitamins in our body along with this vitamins he also identified about specific amino acids okay amino acids such as tryptophan so here the tryptophan is one of an amino acid discovered by hopkins and louis pasteur he was the one who discovered this pasteurization process as well as fermentation process which has a major role in beverage industry as well as baking industry okay moving to the next question now so here we can see dr c bernard the scientist who firstly explained about blood circulation he leuven hock leuven hock william arvey j g mendel ronald ross okay let us look at the answer now so the scientist who firstly explained about blood circulation was william harvey okay he was the one who explained completely about human blood circulatory system and here based upon this experiment on small fishes as well as animals okay so based on the experiments which he had carried out there in small animals as well as fishes so there finally he got to know about the blood circulatory system in human being okay it's all about systemic circulation of blood that is in between the heart as well as the lungs so the uh, circulatory system that takes place in our body in between heart and lungs that is what we call it as sy systemic circulation and it was all discovered by william harvey okay along with that during this experiments he also found that our heart is the one which pumps the blood throughout our body okay heart is the organ which is the circulatory organ that is the one which pumps the blood throughout our whole body so when we are looking at the rest of the options here antony von leeuwenhoek okay leeuwenhoek he was the one who gave us cell theory the cell which is a basic unit of our life 
So the theory of the cell was given by Leeuwenhoek, while this Mendel, okay, J.G. Mendel, he was the one who gave us the principle of inheritance. That is the character that we receive from our parents, that is from one generation to the next offspring, the genetic characters that we receive. And Ronald Ross, okay, he discovered that mosquito is the one which is responsible for the transmission of malaria. Okay, it is a disease which is caused because of female anophilus mosquito, right? Female anophilus mosquito here, it is the one which is responsible for carrying this bacteria, protozoa, to cause, which causes malarial disease. Okay, it is a protozoan disease. Okay, moving to the next question now. So here we can see William Harvey. Match list one with list two and select the correct answers from the quotes given below. Arbor and Smith. So you are under list two, we have developed transgenic plants with agrobacterium tDNA. Feldman discovered endonucleases. Mullis, he discovered reverse transcriptase. Temin, he discovered polymerase Baltimore chain reactions. So here we have the options. Option A, 2, 1, 4, 3. Option B, 1, 2, 4, 3. Option C, 2, 1, 3, 4. Option D, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option A, 2, 1, 4, 3. So Arbor and Smith, they, they discovered endonucleases and Feldman, he discovered and developed transgenic plants with agrobacterium tDNA and Mullis, he discovered polymerase chain reactions, PCR. And here when we are looking at Temin, he was the one who discovered reverse transcriptase enzyme. Okay, so when we are looking at this year, Werner Albert, okay, Werner Albert, along with some other American researchers such as Hamilton Smith, okay, Hamilton Smith, along with him. So the next researcher here is Daniel Nathans, okay, Daniel Nathans. They won 1978 Nobel Prize. They got this Nobel Prize in the year 1978 for their discovery of restriction endonucleases. Okay, it's an enzyme. So, which has a major role in DNA formation, okay? For, based on this, so they got the Nobel Prize in the year 1978. So, Arbor and Smith, they involved together in the discovery of endonucleases. And for the first time, Feldman. So, Feldman, he had demonstrated, Feldman as well as Marx, okay? These two were the scientists. They had demonstrated production of transgenic plants, okay? They initially demonstrated how to produce this transgenic plants without in vitro step, in vitro fertilization, without involving the step, how can we produce this transgenic plant? It was all discovered by Feldman as well as Marx. Okay, and again, so in, initially during their discovery, they started grew, growing this Arbidop, Arbidopsis seeds. Okay, uh, sorry, Arabidopsis seeds. Okay, they grew these seeds, Arad, Arabidopsis seeds, and which usually contain a gene, and this gene containing agrobacterium tumefaciens. Okay, so agrobacterium tumefaciens were the genes which were present here in these seeds, Arabidopsis seeds, so which they taken it out. Okay, they have extracted this out to start generating these transgenic plants. Okay, for their discovery, so this is what was necessary. Okay. So when we are looking at the next option, that is Mullis. Okay, here Mullis, Kerry Mullis, he, he was the one who discovered polymerase chain reaction. Okay, polymerase Baltimore chain reactions. So using, it's all the vitro process. Okay, in vitro synthesis of DNA fragments. 
where the DNA fragments are collected together from different organisms to make one of a com combination of single straight DNA molecules, so DNA structure. So this is what we call it as vitrosynthesis, which usually involves this polymerase chain reaction, PCR method. Okay, it was all discovered by Mullizier. And when we are looking at Temin, okay, Howard Temin, he was the one who discovered reverse transcriptase. Okay, it was discovered by Temin initially and later on. So here, okay, Mullis is the one. Okay, so here we have, it was then finally independently isolated by David Baltimore in the year 1970. So initially it was discovered by Temin. Okay, reverse transcriptase. So it's an enzyme discovered by Temin. Later it was again independently isolated by Baltimore. Okay, that is in the year 1970. So moving to the next question now. To study meiosis in plants, the best part would be a shoot apex, root apex, anthers, leaf cells. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer here is option C, anthers. Okay, to study meiosis in plants, usually this anthers or the one out of the given option. So here we have all of these options when we are looking at this. So your anthers is the one which can be isolated to study about the meiosis process there in plants. Okay, in plants here, meiosis is one of a process which is responsible for cell division right, which occurs basically here in reproductive cells, okay, meiosis that occurs in reproductive cells. So here we know that anther, anther and ovary, these two are the reproductive organs of a flower. Anther is a male reproductive organ, whereas ovary is female reproductive organ. So this anthers are the one which are responsible for the formation of pollen grains, male gamete, and ovary is the one which is responsible for the production of ovules, female gamete. So out of this option, anthers is the one which can be used to know about meiosis process. Okay, since it is a reproductive part of a plant flower. Moving to the next question. So here we have, so this part we call it as anther and here this is filament. Okay, thin thread-like structure that we call it as a filament and at the tip of it, there is a presence of anther. Together we call it as stamen. So here we have the presence of ovary, female reproductive organ in a flower, okay? So these are the one which usually carry out this meiosis process. Meiosis is a process of cell division, okay? The next question here, the virus is protein and lipid, nucleic acid and protein, lipid and carbohydrate, carbohydrate. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The virus is made out of nucleic acid and protein. Okay, so in virus, there is a composition of nucleic acid as well as protein. So viral particles are made out of nucleic acids and nucleic acid, it is a genetic material. Okay, the genetic genes are present here in this nucleic acid, which is responsible for the transformation of the character from parent body to the offspring right, to the next generation. So this nucleic acid is necessary as a genetic material. And here the protein. So some of these viruses, they have a capsid, okay? Not all of these virus, but few of them have capsid. So these capsid are made out of proteins and it is also not cellular, okay? So when we are looking, this is a structure of virus, bacteriophage. Okay, so here we can see the capsule, presence of capsule. The head part, it is a capsule and which is completely made out of protein. Okay, so inside this, there will be presence of genetic material, which is completely made out of nucleic acid. So we can say that the viruses 
or made out of nucleic acids as well as proteins. There is a combination of both of this. Moving to the next question now. Who of the no following is known as the father of botany? Darwin, Lamarck, Carolus Linnaeus, Theophrastus. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. Option D. Okay, Theophrastus, he was the one who is known as father of botany. Okay, Theophrastus is known as the father of botany because he created one of a book called De Historia Plantarum. Okay, De Historia Plantarum. It was all created by Theophrastus where he included many different species of plant in his book. Okay, history of plant was all mentioned here in this book and which was a treatise on plants. So every, all the details that the evolution of different species of plants are involved here. Okay, about the different species of plant. So that is the reason he is considered as a father of botany. Okay, so Carolus Linnaeus, when we are looking at the rest of the options here, Carolus Linnaeus is known as father of modern taxonomy that is the classical classification of the different species of organisms that we have now modern classification hierarchy of classification okay carolus linnaeus was con is considered as a modern taxonomy father of modern taxonomy so here we can see theophrastus he was the one he is the one who is considered as father of botany and when we are looking at lamarck as well as darwin so they have created a theory of evolution, okay? So your Lamarck is best known for his early evolution period, okay? The early evolution which has taken place here on the earth among the different species which were existing earlier, initial period of the life, right? So the evolution there occurred among the different species. It was all mentioned by, explained by Lamarck. And Darwin, so the later on, so the modernized, evolution that we have it was all explained by Darwin in his theory called Darwinism. Okay let us move to the next question now. Who among the following is considered as father of genetic engineering? Philip Drinker, Paul Burke, Thomas Edison, Alpheus Peckard. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option B, Paul Berg. Okay, Paul Berg is considered as the father of genetic engineering. So because Paul Berg is an American biochemist, okay, he is an American biochemist and also created the first DNA molecule. So the first DNA molecule, it was all created by Paul Berg. And this DNA molecule that he had created, it was all made from the different parts of the DNA fragments from different organisms. So he collected the fragments of DNA from different organisms. Finally, he joined all of these fragments of DNA to make a single DNA molecule strand. Okay, And this is what we call it as this type of molecule became known as hybrid DNA. It is all hybrid, which we have usually come taken it from the different organisms, collected from different organisms, DNA structure, right? So this is now, it is known as recombinant DNA. Okay, there is a combination of different DNA fragments of different organisms, which usually possess different characteristics because DNA is the one which usually carry the genes, right? And genes are responsible for the specific characters in an organism. So when we are combining all of this, so finally we will get 
Okay, okay, so obtained form will be completely hybrid DNA, which will possess all the different characters in one single organism, right? So that is in one single DNA molecule that we have made out of this. So in this picture, you can see Paul Berg. Okay, so when we are looking at the rest of the options, Philip Drinker, okay, Philip Drinker as well as along with him. So one more, the next scientist is Louis Agassiz Shaw. Okay, Louis Agassiz Shaw and Philip Drinker, they together work together to find out, to invent the iron lung. Iron lung is also known as trank ventilator, drinker lung. We call it as, we usually call it as drinker lung, which is responsible for, it acts as an artificial lung. Okay, the lungs that we have for respiration process. So here, it acts as a ventilator. Okay, the ventilator that we use today. When we are looking at the, Next, third option here, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison is the one who is responsible for the discovery of Edison's disease. Okay, Edison's disease, what actually will happen here? It is a condition where there will be degeneration of adrenal glands. The adrenal glands that we have just above the surface of the kidney, it will get degraded. So it will be not capable of releasing the required hormone, such as aldosterone. Okay, so if it does not release the hormone, then there will be several problems that we have to face with. Our body cannot function regularly, properly, right? And apart from this, Addison's disease. So the next condition is Addison's anemia. Okay, Thomas Addison is the one who discovered Addison's disease as well as Addison's anemia, which we also call it as pernicious anemia. It is one of a type of pernicious anemia. So in this condition, usually the body fails with fails to absorb vitamin B12 from the food diet that we have, okay? Body cannot absorb this vitamin B12 in the diet that we're taking. So that disease, that disease we call it as Addison's anemia. Moving to the next option that is Alpheus Peckard. Okay, Alpheus Peckard is the one who discovered 500 new species of animals. Okay, he introduced 500 different animal species to us. So majority of the species were butterflies as well as the moths. Okay, the different types of butterflies as well as the moths. So all these different species were all in, introduced by Alphysius, Alphysius Picard. Okay, and he was also known as the founder of American naturalist. Alph Alphysius Picard is also known as the founder of natural American naturalist. Okay, now moving to the next question. Cellulose and starch, both are made up of, so plus glucose, okay, positive glucose, negative fructose, both A and B given above, so positive galactose. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option A, okay, positive glucose. So glucose units are arranged together to form this starch, okay, cellulose as well as starch, both of these are made out of the polymers of this glucose. So if we have one of the glucose molecule here, the next, the next adjacent glucose will be attached with each other. Okay, the next again we have here. So basically, there will be six molecules of glucose, okay? Six glucose atoms are present here to form the starch. So, and all of these molecules are interlinked with each other by acetyl linkage, beta acetyl linkage, okay? All these are linked together by beta acetyl linkage. And when we are looking at the starch here, the starch is made out of two types of molecule. Basically, they are amylose as well as amylopectin. Okay, starch is made out of amylose and amylopectin. And both of these are the polymers of glucose. So monomer is a single unit. When we are talking about polymers, there will be more than one. Okay, more than three actually. So these more than three molecules, different more number of molecules of this glucose are attached together to form this amylose as well as amylopectin. These are the two forms of starch. 
starch is a complex substance whereas the glucose is a simple substance that our body can easily break it down to release energy okay moving to the next question now consider the following statements and correct ones and the correct ones so fish that eradicates the mosquito larvae is gambusia the instrument used to measure blood pressure is auto analyzer ct scanning was developed by godfrey ausenfeld option a only one option b only two option c only one and three option d all are correct Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option C, one and three. So these two statements are correct statements, right statements. Okay, fish that eradicates the mosquito larvae is Gambusia. Okay, here Gambusia is one of a larvaceous, larvivorous fish. Okay, it is a one of a fish larvae which usually feeds upon the mosquito larva. Okay, the larva that is the younger stage of this mosquito after once it breeds. so that is the egg once it hatches the larva stage so usually this gambusia okay gambusia is one of a larvivorous fish that feeds on this mosquito larvae that is the reason this gambusia is one of such organism which is used as bio control agent for mosquito okay bio control agent for mosquito because it cannot again fertilize okay we we can control the growth of this mosquito when we are cultivating this gambusia fish we can inhibit the growth of this mosquito larvae now when we are looking at the second statement the instrument used to measure blood pressure is auto analyzer now this statement is completely wrong because we use pigmo manometer or bp apparatus to measure the blood pressure of an human body right so pigmo manometer is a device used to measure bp blood pressure right that is so that is that can also be called as bp analyzer but when we when do we use where do we use this auto analyzer auto analyzer is a computer controlled machine okay computer controlled machine which is used for biochemical test such as the sample of blood okay biochemical test that can be performed here is the sample of blood urine and other body fluids can be done so when we have to examine biochemical test that we have to perform on all of these samples there we can use this auto analyzer but not for this blood pressure okay when we are looking at the third statement ct scanning was developed by godfrey ausfield okay ct scanning it was all developed by godfrey ausfield in the year 1968 and for the same he got nobel prize in the year 1979 okay so ct scan which is nothing but computer computerized toti potency cells okay so you have to know about this so it was all first time for the first time it was all discovered by godfrey ausfield in the year 1968 and immediately next after few years that is in the year 1979 he got the nobel prize for the same okay so out of this three options first and third options are right and second statement it is wrong because we will use pigmo manometer to measure our blood pressure going to next question who was the discoverer of human blood groups landsteiner levine winier levenhock okay let us look at the right answer here the right answer is option a landsteiner okay option a landsteiner he was the one who gave us who discovered the different human blood groups 
okay our blood group can be divided into different groups and it was all discovered by landsteiner okay carl landsteiner he credited for the discovery of human blood group and in the year 1930 he got the nobel prize for, for the same for physiology or the medicines okay for the discovery of this human blood groups and when we are looking at levenhock levenhock is considered as father of microbiology because he was the one who discovered bacteria for the first time and when we are looking at these two words levan and vinier so these two doesn't exist at all okay these two word doesn't exist at all landsteiner discovered different blood groups in human beings levenhock is considered as father of microbiology for his discoveries okay moving to the next question now so here we can see the picture of landsteiner okay who discovered genetic material crick and watson avery mcclord frederick major levenhock okay let us look at the right answer the right answer here is friedrich meijer okay friedrich meijer he was the one who discovered genetic material in in an organism so he is basically swiss physician as well as biologist and he was the first researcher to isolate as well as to identify nucleic acid okay he isolated various phosphate rich chemicals from the nuclei of white blood cells during this discovery when he started looking at the white blood cells they re extracted this nucleic acid okay he finally extracted this nucleic acid and the same he was called in the year 1869 he called the same nucleic acid as nuclein during its first discovery he called the same that he had extracted as nuclein okay so which finally led to the discovery of genetic material so nucleic acids the or the one which are the genetic material in an organism right which are basically present in the nucleus so here frederick meijer he was the one he extracted this nucleic acids in the white blood cells the nuclei of this white blood cells in the year 1869 finally the same is called then as nucleic acids and nucleic acids are basically responsible for carrying genetic material so this genetic material as we all know that it is required for us to transform the specific characters from our body to our offspring similarly we we would have received the same from our parents right so it is the first report of discovery as well as isolation of genetic material okay when we are looking at the rest of the option crick and watson they were the one who were responsible for the structure okay for the identification of the structure of for the formation of the model dna double helix model okay double helix structure of dna was finally made by the model was extracted by crick as well as watson so when we are looking at avery mcclord avery mcclord he was the one who discovered the structure of dna as a genetic material and this is the one which helps in bacterial transformation okay it was all discovered by avery mcclord levenhock we know that he was the one who is responsible he is also called as father of microbiology he was on discovered he discovered about microorganisms the bacteria that we know about okay let us move to the next question now so here we can see friedrich meijer okay friedrich meijer so who is who had discovered genetic material for the first time while he was researching there in the nuclei of white blood cells so next question which of the following is are fluid connective tissue blood lymph 
both a and b neither a or b okay let us look at the answer so the right answer is option c both a and b okay both blood as well as lymph these two are considered as the fluid connective tissue but what is this fluid connective tissue it is a form of tissue in which the matrix the matrix which is present here in this tissue will be in liquid state okay usually the matrix which are present in this tissues will be in liquid state basically here we have blood lymph so these two are considered as the fluid connective tissue okay next question match list 1 and list with list 2 and select the correct answer from the codes given below the list father of circulatory system so under this list 2 we have stephen hills father of plant physiology william harvey coined the term genera carl landsteiner discovered various blood groups john ray the options are option a 1432 option b 2314 option c 2143 option d 4321 okay let us look at the right answer here yeah, the right answer is option c 2143 so the father of circulatory system okay the father of circulatory system is william harvey okay william harvey was the one who discovered the circulatory system in animals so during this discovery also identified that our heart is the one which is responsible for pumping the blood throughout our body right father of plant physiology so that is stephen hills okay stephen hills is a he was considered as the father of plants physiology and the term genera for the first time it was coined by john ray okay john ray was the one who termed sorry who coined the term genera that is in 17th century and here we have carl linsteiner he was the one who is responsible for the discovery of the various blood groups in human body right all that blood groups that we have it was all discovered by carl linsteiner moving to the next question now from which human stem cells were first functional pacemaker cells developed embryonic stem cells somatic stem cells pluripotent stem cells none of the above okay let us look at the answer the right answer is option c pluripotent stem cells okay so here you can see pacemaker the structure of this is here it is one of an electrical device okay the artificial device which is used okay what is this pacemaker it is a device that is used to send the small electrical impulses to the heart muscle so this is the one okay pacemaker which is usually inserted in human body during that emergency conditions so this is responsible for sending the small electrical impulses to our heart to maintain the suitable heart rate and also to stimulate the lower chambers of our heart that is the ventricles that we have lower chamber of heart so if it pumps properly then definitely required amount of blood can be supplied to all the parts of our body right so here this so finally this uh, human stem cell it was all extracted by pluripotent stem cells which will be usually here clear and it was all discovered by the pacemakers which were discovered by wilson great batch okay he was an american electrical engineer and he invented for the first time he invented this implantable cardiac pacemaker in the year 1958 okay in the year 1958 he discovered this pacemaker which can be implantable that is implantable cardiac pacemaker that we can see here 
so which is responsible for managing maintaining the cardiac heart rate in a human being okay it was all extracted by pluripotent stem cells okay moving to the next question match list 1 with list 2 and select the correct answer from the quotes given below discovery of transduction and conjugation in bacteria so under this list 2 we have corana establishing the sex linked inheritance conberg isolation of dna polymerase from e coli lederberg establishing the complete genetic code morgan so here we have the options option a 4321 option b 3415 option c 4315 option d 3421 Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option A, four, three, two, one. Okay, the transduction as well as conjugation process there in bacteria. It was all discovered by Joshua Lederberg. Okay, Lederberg is the one who discovered the transduction as well as conjugation process in bacteria. And Morgan, he was the one who invented sex-linked inheritance. Okay, sex-linked inheritance. specifically there in drosophila okay so during his investigation he chose this inheritance to find out the inheritance in an organism he selected this plant that is drosophila so there he finally identified and investigated that so there is a presence of sex linked inheritance it was all discovered by morgan and in 1956 okay in the year 1956 arthur conberg and his colleagues they have discovered an enzyme called dna polymerase specifically here in e coli that is escherichia coli okay conberg along, along with his colleagues they were the one they were the one who were responsible for the discovery of an enzyme called dna polymerase 1 dna polymerase 1 which we also call it as pol1 okay this dna polymerase 1 we also call it as pol1 and it was all extracted from escherichia coli okay so next year we have hargo bin corona and marshall dub william nirenberg and robert william holley they were the one given the nobel prize for the discovery of genetic code in the year 1968 okay they finally established the complete genetic code here in the year 1968 and it was all discovered by corona as well as nirenberg and holly they were their colleagues so all of the their combined work led to the discovery of genetic code okay genetic code we know that importance of it now right moving to the next question consider the following statements carolus linnaeus is father of binomial nomenclature of organisms the word taxonomy was coined by augustine de condorcet so which of the above statement is huh, correct one only two only both one and two neither one nor two okay let us look at the right answer here so the right answer is option c both one and two these two statements are correct okay so carolus linnaeus is considered as the father of binomial nomenclature of organisms so all the different species of organisms whether it can be plants or the animals all these organisms are labeled under this binomial nomenclature and this binomial nomenclature of naming organisms is all given by carolus linnaeus okay that is the reason he is considered as father of binomial 
nomenclature. He introduced the naming system for all the organisms for the first time. And here the word taxonomy, okay, taxonomy, which is nothing but the hierarchy of classification, it was all coined by Augustine D. Condole. Okay, Augustine T. D. Condole. So based on this, we can classify him. Here, yeah. the term ta taxonomy was originally coined by Augustine Pyramus D. Condole in the year 1813. Okay, so here Carolus Linnaeus in his book called Species Plantarum. Species Plantarum under this in the year 1753, he has labeled scientifically all the living organisms based on binomial nomenclature. Okay, moving to the next question now. Who of the following invented the cotton gin that separates the seed from cotton three times, 300 times faster than by hand? Ellie Whitney, George Stephenson, McAdam, James Watt. Okay, let us look at the right answer. So the right option here is option A, Ellie Whitney. Okay, Ellie Whitney he was the one who discovered, who invented this cotton gin. And this is the one which is capable of separating all the cotton seeds 300 times faster than that we do manually. Okay, if we started do, start doing it manually. So, but when we are using this cotton gin machine, so we can, the work will become easier as well as the faster. So finally, the profit will be will also be more, right? And American inventor, pioneer, mechanical engineer, as well as manufacturer. So your Ellie Whitney is the best remembered as is as the inventor of cotton gin. So we know the importance of cotton in today's life. We will use it for many purposes. So ginning is process of removing the seeds from that cotton ball. Okay, that is a process called ginning. And this can be carried out with a machine called cotton gin. So this cotton gin is invented by Ellie Whitney. Okay. So when we are looking at the rest of the options here, George Stephenson, he was the one who discovered this railroad. Okay, railroad for the first time. It was all invented by Stephenson and McAdam. McAdam, he discovered McAdam. McAdam is one of a type of road construction process. Okay, it is a type of road construction process. It was all invented by McAdam and James Watt. So he is the one who is responsible for Watt steam engine introduction. Okay, the invention of Watt steam engine is all, is all dependent upon James Watt. He was the one who is responsible for its invention. Moving to the next question now. So here we can see Ellie Whitney. He was the one who is responsible for the discovery of cotton gin, okay? So which of the following is known as father of Indian botany? So Birbal Shani, Casey Mehta, William Roxburgh, T. Sadashivam. Okay, let us look at the right answer. The right answer here is option C, William Roxburgh. Okay, William Roxburgh, which you can see here in, in this picture. So he was the one who is considered as father of Indian botany. Okay, because in the year, this is the time period, time period of William Roxburgh. And during his time period, that is in between 1776 to 1793, so during this stage, he worked at Coromandel Coast. Okay. So during this age, during this stage, in between these years, he was working at Coromandel Coast. And during which he introduced, he discovered many of the plant species here in our India. 
okay and it was all recorded to us so he gave us the discovery of the many plant species that is the reason he is considered as indian botany even though he is a foreigner and when we are looking at the rest of the options here birbal shahnai he was an indian paleobotanist who studied about fossils okay the people who will study about paleo fossils we can consider them as paleobotanist and who studied about the fossils okay of indian subcontinent and when we are looking at kc mehta okay he is considered as indian plant pathologist okay pathologist so he is indian plant pathologist and t sadashiva he was an indian freedom fighter who can write as well as journalist he was a writer he was a journalist as well as freedom fighter during that age time period so now here when we are looking at this william roxburg he was the one who is considered as father of indian botany because he introduced many of the plant species to us move to the next question now which one of the following is bioethically non controversial source of stem cells as an alternative to the highly controversial embryonic stem cells bone marrow which are derived from stem cells amniotic fluid derived stem cells blood of fetuses blood of babies okay let us look at the right answer here the right answer is option a bone marrow derived stem cells okay that is the stem cells which are derived from bo bone marrow basically these stem cells are of two different types embryonic stem cells as well as adult stem cells so this embryonic stem cells they could develop either in the uterus or in test tubes okay it depends usually on an individual and during the early stage of their development of the development of the embryo that is after fertilization zygote forms zygote will further develop into embryo right so during the first development initial stage of the development of this embryo so this bone marrow is taken out and this is the one which is used as a stem cells so these stem cells were responsible for the formation of different organs in our body in an individual's body that is basically in the body of fetus here okay the organs like brain heart muscles all these will finally develop from the stem cells okay so now we know the importance of stem cells right so using the stem cells we can develop that will usually develop into different organs in an individual right but when we are looking at this adult stem cell okay these are usually found in bone marrow muscles as well as the brain in an individual so if we use the stem cells it can be replaced with that of the damaged cells okay when we are placing the stem cells here in an infected person where there is a damage in the bone marrow muscles or the brain so if we are inserting this these stem cells are the one which can replace the damaged cells and produce the new healthy cells where the individual will be healthy again clear so next question who propounded the theory of jumping gene G. J. Mendel, Thomas Hunt, McClinton, Henrich Hertz. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option C, McClintock. Okay, so your jumping gene it was all discovered by McClintock. So with which is a phenomenon present in the males. Usually the physical character that is jumping gene is nothing but the physical character in an organism. Usually it will be on and off. Sometimes the character that we have seen today 
may, may not exist tomorrow. So usually the gene character, the physical structure of that organism usually differs on and off. That is the reason we consider the same as jumping gene. And it's all discovered by Mecklington. So they're in, usually they're in maize plants. Okay, maize plants, there he found out this character of jumping gene and which led to the discovery of this jumping gene in that plant, okay, in that organism, living organism. So when we are looking at G.J. Mendel, okay, Mendel used the one who proposed the principle of inheritance. Okay, that is the acquired character from the parents. And Henrich Hertz, so Henrich Hertz, he gave us the theory of electromagnetic waves and also provided the unit of sound. So all the electromagnetic waves, the theory of these waves are all given by Henrich Hertz, right? And Thomas Hunt, okay, Thomas Hunt, he discovered white-eyed mutation in fruit fly drosophilia, the usual common fruit flies that we see around us, drosophilia, right? So there is a mutation that it can form white eye. Okay. After the mutation, finally, in the so obtained organism, the eye was completely white. So this white eyed mutation was all for the first time absorbed by Thomas Hunt. Okay. So basically, this jumping gene, it was all discovered by McClintock. Okay. So here you can see his picture. So her picture. Moving to the next question. Consider the following statements and choose the correct code given below. The virus was discovered by Ivanovsky. The bacteria were discovered by Rodolphe Virko. The cell theory proposed by Sclidon and Squan. The options are option A, one and two, option B, two and three, option C, one and three, and option D, one, two, and three. Okay, let us look at the right answer. The right answer here is option C, one and three. Okay, let us look at these two statements here. The correct statements are the virus, it was all discovered by Ivanovsky. Okay, so Dimitri Ivanovsky, he was the one for the first time he described about a non bacterial pathogen. It is a pathogen. Pathogen is the one which will usually harm us, right? So these pathogens, which are completely non-bacterial, that is, it doesn't show any characteristics that as that of the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So it is a non-bacterial pathogen. It was all described for the first time by Dmitry Ivanovsky there in the tobacco plants while discovering there during his inventions, okay, during his research there in the tobacco plant, which was infected. So in the year 1892, he described all about this virus, okay? And later on, okay, then later on, the final actual discovery of this tobacco mosaic virus. So this is the first virus which we have discovered. Our scientists have discovered this, okay? Tobacco mosaic virus, which had, so which had affected this tobacco plants. Okay, it was all done by Martinus Bejerink, Beger, okay, Bejerink. So it was all discovered for the first time by the viruses were actually discovered by Marinus Bejeni, but for the first time it was all described, okay? He gave us the idea, Dmitry Ivanovsky was the one who gave us the idea about the presence of viruses, okay? But later on, during the discovery of tobacco mosaic virus in the year 1898, okay? It was all discovered there in that year. And Anton von Leeuwenhoek in the year, that is in 17th century credited with the discovery of bacteria, okay? So there when he has taken the small sample, a drop of pond water and he just identified the cells there in his own discovered designed microscope, there he found that small organisms which were usually moving there in the pond water, drop of pond water, okay? So this led him to the discovery of the bacteria for the first time. Anton von Leeuwenhoek discovered the bacteria. 
clear? And Theodore Squan, okay, Squan that we have here, and Matthias Jacob Scleden, Scleden and Squan, along with them. So one more scientist that is Rudolf Virchow. Okay, Rudolf Virchow. So here we have Rudolf Virchow, Scleden, Squan. These three were the scientists who gave us cell theory. They proposed a cell theory. Okay, that is that they say that cells are the basic structure and functional unit of all the organism. So this cell theory is all given by all these three scientists. But bacteria it was all discovered by Leeuwenhoek. Okay. So by this, we can say that only the first statement as well as the third statements were true. Clear? Going to the next question now. Consider the following statements and select the correct answer from the quotes given below. Assertion, Mendel worked on garden pea. Reason, garden pea belonged to family Malvaceae. Option A, both A and R are true and R is correct explanation of A. Option B, both A and R are true, but R is not the correct explanation of A. Option C, A is true, but R is false. Option D, A is false, but R is true. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. So option C is the right one. That is A is true, but R is false because the garden pea does not belong to Malvaceae family. Okay, let us look at the right answer then. So when we are looking at this, okay, the first statement that is assertion, Mendel worked on garden pea. Yes. For his genetic studies, he had chosen this garden pea because of its specific character which is required for his studies. Okay, the specific character that this garden pea possesses, they are, it is usually, as usually, short lifespan, self-pollinating crop, and also have seven distinguishable characters. Okay, this pea plants, they have seven distinguishable characteristic features so easily, we, we can easily, if we have seven different characters, we can easily compare them with each other, which is necessary for the study of these plants here, right? And along with that, it is self-pollinating, okay? Self-pollinating crop as well as it also has a short lifespan. So which can be grown easily whenever we have to research it. So based on all this feature, Mendel chose this green garden pea plants for his genetic studies, okay? This P, okay, P, scientifically we call it as P sum sativum. Okay, this is the binomial nomenclature of P plants, P sum sativum, and it belongs to, it is one of a leguminous crop. Okay, there are different species of crop, and your P sum sativum is the one which belongs to leguminous crop, and the family that it belongs to is Fabaceae, and it is not Malvaceae. Okay, it is not Malvaceae. The family that this garden P belongs to is family Fabaceae. Okay, so this statement is completely false. So only first statement, that is assertion is true here. Mendel worked on green garden plants, but these green garden plants belong to family Fabaceae. Okay, going to the next question now. So here you can see all the different characteristics possessed by these green plants. Clear? Match list one with list two and select the correct answer by using the codes given below. So under this list one, we have theory of mutation and under list two, Beadle and Tatum, theory of evolution, Jacob and Monard, one gene, one enzyme hypothesis, Darwin, concept of operon, DeVries. So option A, 3412, option B, 3421, option C, 4312 and option D, 4321.
Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option C, 4, 3, 1, 2. Okay, theory of mutation, it was all given by Hugo D. Vries. Okay, Hugo D. Vries. So he was the one who gave us the theory of mutation. That is from how these plants or any other species will get mutated from one character to the next. Okay, the mutation that we can observe in different organism, it was all first explained here by D. Vries. Okay, theory of evolution, it was all given by Jacob and, sorry, so theory of mutation. Okay, so here we have theory of evolution. It's all given by Darwin. Okay, Darwin was the one who gave us the theory of evolution. That is how the organisms will get, uh, okay, so how it will get, so change evolution that we can observe in different organisms from one species to the next. So how these human beings are evolved from different organisms the first arrival of these organisms, okay? So here, theory of evolution, it's, it was all given by D. Reyes and theory of mutation is given by Darwin, okay? It was an interchange here. And one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. One gene, one enzyme hypothesis is all given by Beadle and Tatum in the year 1941. So here we have the options. Beadle and Tatum, that is in the year 1941, they gave us one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. That is, that says that one gene can hold this only one enzyme within that. Okay, in one gene, there is a presence of one gene can code for, sorry, one enzyme can code for only one enzyme, one gene. Okay, next year we have concept of operon. Okay, this concept of operon is all given by Jacob and Monod in the year 1961, clear? 1961, they gave us this concept of operon. Okay, moving to the next question now. Match list one with list two and select the correct answer from the codes given below. So under this list one, we have testosterone, list two, here we have sedative drug, codeine, Indian rubber, kakachu, Aromatic oil of clove, eugenol, hormone. So option A, 4, 1, 2, 3. Option B, 1, 2, 3, 4. Option C, 4, 3, 2, 1. And option D, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay, students, let us look at the right answer here. Okay, the right answer is option A, 4, 1, 2, 3. Okay, 4, 1, 2, and 3. So let us know about this here. Testosterone. Okay, testosterone is a male sex hormone. Okay, and codeine. Codeine, it is one of a sedative drug. Sedative, which is nothing but sleep-inducing drug. Okay, which is uh, basically required for surgical procedure, sedative drug, okay. Kochu, okay, the third option that we have here is Kochu. It is an Indian rubber that we will extract it from the different plants, rubber plants usually. Kochu is the one, Indian rubber. And Eugenol, Eugenol is aromatic oil of clove. The aroma, the essence of this oil, which is extracted from the clove plants, okay, clove flowers. Okay, moving to the next question now. The word gene was first, firstly used by Walder, Watson, Crick, Johansson.
Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option D, Johansson. Okay, Johansson Wilhelm. Wilhelm Johansson, he was a Danish botanist as well as plant physiologist as well as geneticist. Okay, geneticist, plant physiologist as well as botanist. So, William Johansson. Okay, in his book, he introduced one of the term called gene. So, for the first time, the term gene was introduced. It was all coined by Johansson. Okay, and this term was coined in opposition to the common pan gene. Okay, your pan gene is the one which is genetically hereditary character. Okay, genetically hereditary character found in few of the organism. So, in opposition to this, the, for the first time, the term gene was coined by Wilhelm Johansson. Okay, it was all stemmed from Darwin's theory of pangenesis. So here, this common pangen, it was all in the opposition of this gene. Okay, so which was actually mentioned here in Darwin's theory of pangenesis. So from this theory, theory he has extracted this word pangen, which is completely in opposition to that of the gene. And this book, that the book it was mentioned there, Wilhelmson Johnson, he mentioned had become one of the founding texts of genetics, where he had introduced the word gene here in this genetics. Clear? The book which is completely all about the genetics. And here, when we are looking at the rest of the option, Watson and Crick, okay, Watson and Crick, they gave us the double helix structure of DNA in the year 1953. Okay, in the year 1953, they gave us the model double helix structure of the DNA. And when we are looking at the first word, Walder, it is one of the term, okay, mm -hmm. one of the word which is given to English old fragments, the word old fragments that we have. For that, the word given here is Walder. Clear? Moving to the next question now. So here you can see Johansson, who gave us the term gene for the first time, which he had mentioned that in his book. Clear? So consider the following statements and choose the correct ones. Loose myth of wheat is caused by Pusinia gramesis, father of Indian mycology and plant pathology is E.J. Butler. So option A, one only. Option B, two only. Option C, both one and two. Option D, neither one nor two. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right option is option B, two only. So out of these two statements, the right statement here is the second statement. Okay, the first statement is completely wrong. When we are looking at both of this here, so the father of Indian mycology as well as plant pathology is E.J. Butler. Okay, E.J. Butler, he was considered as father of Indian mycology. Mycology is nothing but study of fungus the different species of fungi, the study of this fungus, we call it as mycology. And you are the father of this mycology is Butler. Okay, E.J. Butler as well as plant pathology. And when we are looking at the first statement, loose mouth of wheat is caused by Puccinia gramesis. Actually, this Puccinia gramesis is the one which will usually cause a disease called stem rust. That is basically in cereal plants. Okay, cereal plants, Usually the stem, there will be formation of brownish spots on the stem of that plant, cereal plants. And that is what we call it as stem rust. And it's all caused by a microorganism called, microorganism called Puccinia gramesis. Okay, but this loose mud, loose mud there in the case of wheat. So here in this picture, you can see loose mud, which occurs there in the wheat plants, that is all caused by one of a, an organism. Okay, called Eustilago triticae. Okay, Eustilago triticae. 
is the one which causes this loose mud disease here in weak plants. What actually will happen here when there is a disease? Usually this loose mud is the one. It is one of a fungal disease. Okay, here Puccinia gramesis as well as Ustilago triticae, all these are the fungus which are found in the plants. Okay, they can damage and infect the plants, the plant crops. Clear? So this loose, loose mud, so when it is, when the disease, okay, when the plant is infected from this fungus, so it will usually replace the green, grain head. Can you see the grains here, which is usually has turned into blackish color, the dark color, because there will be spores of the fungi. Fungi will usually consist of the spores and the spores are usually present on the crops. Okay. So usually when they are growing, all the mass of the spores usually affect the open flowers. But this open flower initially during their growth, it will be normal, just like the normal healthy plants. But after flowering, when it forms the seeds, seeds will also be healthy. But after its maturation, when the seeds are mature to harvest, during this stage, the healthy plant will turn into, it will start showing some of the infections there. Okay, we can identify the infections there in that plant, infected plant. Clear? Because as and when it is carrying, it will eat, hide all of these characters, all of the symptoms. Finally, when the plant, when the crop is mature to harvest, we can identify the infection there in such plants. Usually the plants with this disease, that is loose mud. Okay, if there is a loose mud disease in this wheat plant, they show some of the symptoms like yellowish leaf streaks. Okay, yellowish leaf streaks. So here you can see it is, which is turning into yellowish color and stiffs dark green colored leaves. Okay, here are the spores which will usually turn it out into black color. The grain aid will turn it into black color because of the presence of mass of spores there. Okay, so it is all caused by a fungi called Estilago triticae. That is not Puccinia gramesis. Okay, come to the next question now. Which one of the following scientists first time saw bacteria through a microscope made, made by himself? Anton von Leeuwenhoek, Louis Pasteur, Robert Hooke, Robert Verco. Okay, let us look at the answer here. So it was all for the first time discovered by Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Okay, bacteria for the first time discovered by Anton von Leeuwenhoek from his own made, okay, self-made microscope. He designed one of a device called microscope and through which when he identified a sample that we, he had taken there, he could see some of the bacteria, some of the tiny living species which will usually roaming around there. Okay, it was all moving there in the sample. So finally identified that it has a non it, it, it has a bacteria. It was all first discovered by Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Usually during his discovery for the first time, he just took the sample of plague, okay, plague in his own teeth. That is the yellowish spot that appears on the teeth, right? The yellowish part that appears on the teeth that we call it as plague. And he extracted this small sample of the plague and which he mixed it with water. So now the solution which he took out of this so a few drops of the solution and he finally identified, he just went through the same, through a microscope. When he looked it through the microscope, there he can see, okay, he could see many very little living animal, animalcules, okay. He, he could see that many very little living animalcules there on the sample that he had taken. Finally, he named this as bacteria and that is what we call these organisms as bacteria today, okay. And he also identified that, okay, all these animalcules which were there in that sample of the plague in his mouth. So it were killed when he drank hot coffee. So even though when, even we, when we drink this hot coffee, hot water, all of this, the hot food substances, usually the bacteria, which is usually present in the mouth, we can kill them. Louis Pasteur, okay, he discovered pasteurization process. Robert Verco, he gave us cell theory and Robert Hooke, he identified the cells for the first time and the cells that he had identified were dead cells. That is in the year 1665. Come to the next question now. So here you can see Anton von Leeuwenhoek, 
who discovered bacteria for the first time. Consider the following statements. The cell was discovered by Robert Hooke. Nucleus was described by Robert Brown. Plant cells generally have lysosomes. Which of the above statement is are correct? Option A, only one. So option B, one and two only. Option C, two and three only. Option D, one, two and three. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. Option B. Okay, the right answer here is option B, that is one and two only. So out of these three statements, only the first as well as the second statements are true. The third statement is completely false. Okay, because when we are looking at this, the cell for the first time, it was all discovered by Robert Hooke in the year 1665. That is while extracting the cork of this dead plant, usually dead tree usually, so there he found that when he was identifying it under the microscope, there he could see some of the smallest compartments there in that cells. Okay, the thin slice of the cells. So finally, he could label the same as cellulase, so which is nothing but a cell. Okay, and during this discovery itself, he could see the nucleus which were there. Okay, nucleus which was there. Basically, this Anton von Leeuwenhoek, who discovered bacteria for the first time, they, for the first time, he described about nucleus which is present in the cell. And it is the first organelle which was discovered. Okay, later on, that is around 1831, in the year 1831, it was all completely described and in detail by Robert Brown. Okay, Robert Brown, he was a Scott botanist. He discovered complete detailed explanation about the nucleus which is present in the cell and it is the one which is responsible for all the cellular activity. All the functions of the cell is all controlled by the nucleus present. And this nucleus is the first organelle when we are looking at the rest of the organ like mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum. So from all out of all of these organelles, nucleus is the first organelle that was discovered, okay? And when we are looking at the third statement here, plant cells generally have lysosomes. No, it is false. So plant cell as well as yeast cell, okay? Yeast cell, they does not contain this lysosome organelle, one of a cell organelle. So this lysosomes are present only in there in animal cells, not in plant cells, okay? Plant cell doesn't contain this lysosomes. Moving to the next question now. The theory of mutation was propounded by Devres, Malfiji, Robert Hook, Pasteur. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option A, Devres. Okay, Devres, he was the one who gave us the theory of mutation. So here you can see him. In this picture, right, the mutation theory it was all propounded by Dutch scientists. It is D. Veris in the year 1901. Okay, 1901. So in this year, Dutch scientist that is, so his name is D. Veris. He was the one who gave us mutation theory. That is when we combine an organism, how it will get mutated from one character to the next. So the physical character can be cannot be absorbed the same in the next offspring, right? How the mutation will usually happen. It was all explained here in this theory called mutation theory. And this theory is all given by Devres. Okay, basically he identified this, uh, this occurrence in a plant called evening primrose. During his discoveries, invention in the research there, when he was looking at this evening primrose, he could see the mutation happening there. Finally, he gave us a theory called mutation theory. Okay, Robert Hooke gave us cell theory and also coined the term cell. 
Malfigi is also known as father of microscopic an anatomy. Okay, microscopic anatomy. Father of this is Malfigi. And Pasteur gave us the term pasteurization. He explained about the process of pasteurization. That is heat killing microorganisms. Okay, moving to the next question now. Match list one with list two and select correct answer from the codes given below the list. So under this list one, we have anthrax. And under this list two, it is due to defective gene, thalassemia, womb renting, surrogacy, signs of altering genes, transgenics, a toxin used by biowarfare. So options, option A, 4, 1, 2, 3. Option B, 2, 3, 1, 4. Option C, 3, 2, 1, 4. And option D, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option A, 4, 1, 2, 3. Okay, let us match this here. The causative agent of anthrax. Okay, the causative agent of this anthrax disease, usually it is all caused by a bacterium. Okay, this bacterium is the one which is used as potent biowarfare. It is used as a toxic there in the biowarfare. Okay, so bacterium. Okay, anthracia is a bacterium which is the one which is responsible for a disease called anthrax. This is the one. This disease can be absorbed there in cattle as well as human being. Basically, they are in uh, cattle. Okay, cattle there, anthrax disease. So, um, bacterium is the one causative agent. This bacterium is used as a toxin there in bio warfare. Clear? And next we have thalassemia. Thalassemia is one of a defective gene which is found in Hemoglobin. This is a disease which is all caused by a defective gene. And this defective gene is found in hemoglobin there in our red blood cells. Surrogacy, it is an intermediate stage in artificial insemination for producing offspring, which is nothing but generally we call it as womb renting. Womb renting. Okay. That is intermediate stage of the produce, production of offspring. During this offspring production, it is one of the intermediate stage where an individual, if they are not capable of natural process, artificial insemination is done by a procedure called surrogacy. Okay, so next year we have transgenics. Transgenics, so it's all, it is a science which usually deals with altering genes. Transgenics is a branch of science which deals with the study of altering genes. And that is what we call it as transgenics. Okay, moving to the next question now. A species inhabiting different geographical areas is known as allopatric species, sympatric species, biospecies, sibling species. Okay, let us look at the right answer here. The right answer is option A, allopatric species. Okay, here allopatric species is a species inhabiting different geographical areas. So here you can see. So different geographical areas. So initially it was like this. But the new species came here when there is a change in geo geographical area. It can be mountain ranges, oceans, or even large river water. So when there is a change in this geographical area, the new species so obtained from this, we call it as allopatric species. Okay, sympatric species. So here in this case, group of same ancestral species that will evolve into separate species. Initially, it will be the same. So here you can see. Initially, all the species that we can see here will be the same. But as and when there is an evolution, we can see something new, which is completely different from the ancestors one. That is what we call it as sympatric species. And biospecies, it is a group of organisms which can reproduce to form the same fertile offspring. 
okay all the bio species all the organisms that we can see around reproduce to form the same fertile offspring that is what we call it as bio species and sibling species it looks like it looks alike for example if we take a parrot and the next parrot both of this look alike but they cannot mate with each other they cannot breed with each other okay that is what we call it as sibling species okay moving to the next question now the structure of double helix of dna was described by dr m soha dr s hawking watson and crick dr a fleming Okay, let's look at the right answer. The right answer is Watson and Crick. They gave us the double helix structure of DNA. Okay, through a model they explained about the double helix structure of DNA model that you can see here. So this is a double helix structure which is all given by Watson and Crick. So it's all based on the X-ray diffraction image which was all given by Rosalind Franklin and Raymond Gosling in the year May nineteen fifty two. based on this x-ray di diffraction they could finally identify this double helix structure of dna as well as the knowledge which was given by hervin chergov okay hervin chergov he was the one who gave us some of the knowledge which was really based upon this double helix structure based on all of this information they collected and gathered all together based on their combined work they could finally identify the double helix structure of dna and here dr m soha she is considered as pediatric as well as adult can cancer specialist she could clear the cancer by treatment called chemotherapy and hawking okay here hawking he gave us the theory of exploding black holes which is during upon both relative theory and quantum mechanics so black hole theory it was all given by hawking and dr a fleming okay fleming he was the one alexander fleming who discovered penicillin it was the first antibiotic drug Okay, going to the next question now. Who is called the father of taxonomy? Aristotle, Carolus Linnaeus, Theophrastus, Lamarck. Okay, let us look at the right answer. Here, the father of taxonomy is Carolus Linnaeus. He is the one who is considered as father of taxonomy. Okay, along with that. is also known as modern father of modern ecology okay so here carolus linnaeus is also considered as father of modern ecology and he was the one who is the founder of binomial nomenclature right carolus linnaeus who gave us the scientific naming of all the living organisms and that is the one which we call it as binomial nomenclature so that is one of the modern biological naming scheme for all the living organisms here and that is the reason is also known as modern taxonomy father of modern taxonomy okay based on the classification of hierarchy hierarchical classification system and aristotle is known as the father of biology okay aristotle is father of biology theophrastus is the father of botany and lamarck who gave us the theory of lamarckism okay this lamarckism it is all about the origin of species which all depends upon where the environment will play a major role here in the origin of species okay it is all explained by lamarck in his lamarckism theory of lamarckism okay moving to the next question so here you can see carolus linnaeus the major constituent of connective tissue is lipid carbohydrate cholesterol collagen Okay, here the right answer is option D, collagen. Collagen is one of the 
major connective tissue which is present in our body. As we have already discussed, connective tissue such as the blood, bone, bone is a connective tissue, blood is also a, the different types of the blood, white blood cell, platelets, red blood cells. So all of these are the connective tissue which is present in our body, which can easily flow, right? And along with all of this, collagen, collagen fibers, fibroblasts, all of these are major connective tissue which is present in our body. Okay. Going to the next question. So here you can see connective tissue. It is a dense fiber that we can see here. Dense network, right? Well-known network-like structure that we can see in our body, which has a major role in our body. Okay. Different functions. The last question that we have here is, which of the following acts as an insulator against heat, cool, and as a shock absorber in our body? Dermis, epidermis, subcutaneous, all of the above. Okay, let us look at the right answer. The right answer is option C, subcutaneous. Okay, subcutaneous is the innermost layer of our skin. So this is the complete structure of our outer skin that we have. Okay, this is the outer skin layer, which we call it as epidermis. And the middle layer of the skin, we call it as dermis. And the innermost layer, okay, this part, we call it as subcutaneous layer, where there will be more major component of this is fat. Okay, more fat layer that can be absorbed here. And this fat layer, which is present here in subcutaneous tissue, acts as an insulator. Okay, this fat layer, it acts as an insulator and also conserve our body's heat, acts as a shock absorber, also protect our internal organs. So there beneath our skin, there is a presence of fat layer here in our subcutaneous, subcutaneous tissue layer of our skin. Okay, so which has a major role in our body. Okay, so students and thank you for attending the class today. And in this class, you have discussed about, we have discussed the major questions, the important questions which are related to the topic discovery as well as inventions of different concepts, right? Different things that we use today. So which has, which plays a major role in today's life which made our life easy. So all the discoveries, all the inventions about different scientists that we have discussed today in the various questions that we discussed so far. And thank you for attending the class.